Hi, I'm Axel Wilkinson from HitFilm.com, and I'm going to be guiding you through your first project with HitFilm 3 Pro. In about 10 minutes, you are going to create this. We can't make you an expert in 10 minutes, but this will give you a taste of what you can learn to do with HitFilm 3 Pro. Let's get started. When you launch HitFilm, the home screen opens. Here you can create a new project, open an existing project, or access the manual. Hopefully you have downloaded the files for this tutorial, and we will open Project 1. This takes us to the edit screen where the bulk of your work in HitFilm will be done. Several clips have been imported and added to the timeline. Select all the videos, right click, and choose Make Proxy. This will process the files in the background to ensure smooth performance. Then we'll add a few more clips to finish out this sequence. In the media panel, find and select the escaping clip and it opens here in the trimmer. This clip contains a reverse angle of Jimmy. This is Jimmy over here as he's jumping back from that gunshot. The reverse angle of that is in this clip here. So we want to find the spot where he's starting to fall over backwards, maybe just here where he's starting to come off the ground. And then we will click this button to set the end point. Then decide how much of this clip you want to use, and we can set the out point using this button. This light gray bar indicates the portion of the total clip which we have selected. Now we can drag that from the trimmer down onto our timeline after our other clips. Now let's add the guard approaching from the guard's stairs clip, and we want to find the spot right before he enters the frame. So there he's coming into frame. We'll back that up a little bit, maybe right in there. Then we can set our in point again, and then we want to set the out point at the point right as he comes around and is looking up the stairs. So right in there, the idea is that as he looks up, we cut away to see what he's looking at. So here we'll set our out point. We want to add this in front of all our other clips. So let's move our playhead to the start of the timeline, and then we can perform an insert edit by clicking the insert clip button here, and that will just nudge everything else down the timeline to make room for this clip. These are the basic techniques and tools you will use to edit together your projects in HitFilm's editor. But HitFilm can do much more than that, including creating amazing effects. Let's open the bullet hit composite shot to start creating some effects now. Just click on that tab to open it. Now I've already done some camera tracking here so that this impact point stays locked right onto the wall while the camera moves around. Learning how to track will be covered in other tutorials, but this tracking point will show you how useful HitFilm's tracking features can be once you learn to use them. So, in addition to nearly 200 effects that can be customized to fit your exact needs, HitFilm also includes a preset system which lets you access pre-made effects or save your own custom settings. So let's scroll down in the effects panel, open the presets folder, and we're going to go into 3D effects, particle simulator, and find the dust puff. Once you find it, drag it onto the timeline and place it above the two existing layers. Now if you play through that, you'll see we get a nice puff of dust, but it's detached from the wall. It doesn't move properly. This is where our tracking point comes in. So, open the parent menu for the dust puff layer and select our impact point. By parenting this layer to the point, any movement of the point layer will be used by our dust layer too. Now, double click the dust puff layer and that will open its controls in the controls panel. Open the transform properties and set the position to zero. This will line it up exactly with its parent layer. So now, that dust originates right at our impact point there on the wall and moves as if it was part of the original scene. Let's use the same process again to add some debris flying off from the impact. So back in the effects panel, find the bullet sparks preset and we'll drag that onto the timeline, again adding it to the top. I'm going to close this layer, then once again we will parent our bullet sparks to the impact point, then double click and in the transform controls, zero out their position. Now when we scrub through, you see we have these bits flying off, but they're actually moving so fast if you play this, there really should be some blur on those. And HitFilm makes this super easy as well. So open the layer properties here in the controls panel, 
and tick the box next to motion blur. Now HitFilm will help us out by calculating how far the particles are traveling on each frame and automatically adding the correct amount of blur. Next, we need to create the damage caused by the bullet hitting the wall. So back in the media panel, damage.png is a still image I created by editing one frame of this video in an image editor. Grab that and add it to the timeline, but this time instead of going on top, drag it down so it's just above our stairs video. Now you'll see that chunk that's taken out of the wall there. I can toggle that on and off so you can see it. And you'll notice that it aligns nicely with the background on frame zero of our clip here. So let's use our parenting trick once again. We'll parent this to our impact point, And now that damage stays right in place throughout the shot. Once that's in place, let's trim two frames off the start of this layer by just grabbing the beginning there and dragging it over. And that way the damage won't appear until after the impact. And there is your first effect shot finished. Shall we do another? Switch to the muzzle flash composite shot and let's add some effects to this gun. If you scrub through the timeline here, you will hear a pop from the gun on frame 5, which we can use for reference when placing our effects. So let's go back to the presets folder. Remember effects, presets, and this time we're going to use a gunfire preset. So open that up and find the shotgun. And we'll drag this to the timeline, but this time instead of just dropping it here, drag it over and we can use these crossing blue lines to place the start of the effect right at frame 5. And now the muzzle flash won't appear until frame 5 when the gun fires. Once again we have a tracking point, this time tracking the muzzle of the gun as it moves through the shot. So parent the shotgun layer to the muzzle point, then double click and once again we'll zero out its position in the transform controls. You are probably starting to see how useful tracking is for effects work. Now this effect can be rotated in 3D space, so we can line it up with the angle of the gun no matter where the gun is pointing. Grab the rotation Y control and just drag that around and you can see how this works. So we want to set that to about 64 and then to point it up a little bit more, to line it up with the gun, set the rotation Z to minus 6. Now clearly that's a bit too big, so we will reduce the scale of this shotgun layer to 40%. Next, open up the layer properties and we will change the blend mode. This menu gives you a variety of ways that your selected layer can be blended with the layers beneath it. You might want to take some time to just play with these different options and see what they do. But for bright effects like this muzzle flash, either screen or add is going to give the best result. The effects we have used so far have created new layers that we can add to our video. But HitFilm has many effects that can be used to modify existing layers too. In the effects panel, you can also quickly access effects by using the search box. Let's search for zoom to find the zoom blur, then drag that onto our shotgun layer. Double click it to open its controls in the controls panel, and we want to center this effect on our muzzle point layer, and then increase its strength to around 20. If you jump ahead a couple of frames to where these sparks are flying out of the gun, you can really see how much that zoom blur improves the look of the effect. Now to add some muzzle smoke, go back to effects and search for gun smoke. HitFilm dynamically updates the search results while we type. Then we'll drag this gun smoke effect onto the timeline just below our shotgun and maybe one frame before it. Open its controls by double clicking and change its scale to 60%. Then open up its emitters, emitter shape, and we will use the attach to layer property to attach this to our muzzle point. And now it's positioned correctly on the muzzle, but you'll notice the trajectory doesn't quite line up with our sparks. So let's just change the rotation X for that emitter to somewhere in the 11 or 12 degree range. And that uh, nicely lines up the smoke with the rest of our muzzle flash effect. And there's two shots finished. That was easy, right? Let's go back to the media panel, select these two composite shots, right click and make proxies for those. And then the next thing we want to do is switch to the editor and add a proper sound effect for our gunshot. So let's bring the zoom level down here so we can see our other clips, then find the frame where the muzzle flash first appears. Now we'll grab the shotgun sound effect and drag it onto the timeline right below our video starting at that frame. Okay, let's go ahead and save our project by clicking this little button here. 
Then let's jump to the beginning of the timeline and play back through this thing. Nicely done. Not bad for your first try. Now, HitFilm 3 Pro also has dozens of effects for color correction and color grading. Let's search for Cine style. Then let's drag this effect on to our first clip. Let's open the controls for that effect. Now, I'm not going to give you specific values to use for this effect. Instead, I want you to experiment with the various controls that are available and find the settings that you like. Once you're happy with the look, we can just right click and copy. Then select all the other clips on our timeline and paste here. Now all of the clips will receive this grade so that they match nicely. Now it's probably a good time to save again. Then we can click this export button to open the export settings. So we have a variety of different options available to us for export. If you're working with the HitFilm demo, you'll be using the YouTube option to send this to your YouTube channel. But for now, I'm going to use the H.264 option with just the default settings and export this file. We'll give it a name and save. Okay, I'm Axel Wilkinson. I know we went pretty fast through this tutorial and there's a lot of stuff that we didn't cover yet. So I encourage you to join us on the forums at hitfilm.com to ask any questions you might have there. Check out the other free tutorials that we offer and please keep experimenting with the software as well. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.